So in this video, we'll cover as rep roasting or AS rep roasting using the domain environment that we built out in some of the previous videos in this series. So finally, we are putting our lab environment to the test. We are demonstrating how to find and exploit some really common Active Directory vulnerabilities. And perhaps we will be pretty soon incorporating some of the command and control stuff in there using Covenant and things like that. Maybe even playing around with some other frameworks. But just to get right into ASREP roasting, if you're not too familiar, it is a vulnerability that comes up when you know, through a misconfiguration, like many of these Active Directory vulnerabilities. Now, to understand this, you first have to understand a little bit about uh, Kerberos auth and how that entire process works. So when Kerberos is being used for authentication, it, it actually does something called uh, pre-auth, pre-authentication. And essentially what that is, is the user will encrypt you know, using their own password, of course, only they know, they will encrypt a timestamp and send that timestamp to the uh, to the server, to the Kerberos server, and it will decrypt it to verify that it is, in fact, you know, authorized. It is them doing it, right? Now, the interesting thing is there's also an option, a feature, I guess you would say, right, where you can untick the box and say, don't require pre-authentication. And the analogy that a lot of people make when explaining this is that of the ticket booth, right? So if you have, uh, you know, normally you have someone working the ticket booth at like, say, a movie theater or a concert or whatever, right? And basically with the default options, you're basically having to confirm your identity in order to use your ticket, right? In order to get issued the ticket. So... You could say like, "Hey, uh, I'm signed. I'm on the list. Give me my ticket." And they would say, "Okay, what is your name?" Okay, let me look that up. Verify it. Okay, yep, you are on the list. Here you go. Here is your ticket uh, to the movie or to the event, whatever. Right now, basically, when you turn off the pre-authentication requirements, you are essentially able to go up to the ticket booth and say, "Oh yeah, my name is Tom Cruise. I'm on the list," <laughs> and they're not going to verify. Uh, that you are in fact that user, they're just going to say, oh yeah, Tom Cruise, you know, you're allowed into this VIP event. Here's your ticket, right? And then you just move on. So that is basically what these attacker tools are doing that you're going to see, you know, like when we use Impacket or Rubius, essentially what they're going to be doing is saying like, oh yeah, we're this user on the domain, this other user that we, we totally are not, right? And because there's no verification in place, the server is going to say, oh yeah, sure, here you go, here's your ticket. You know, if the user account has a strong password, you know, there's not too much you can do with it. Now you can use these tickets, right, to access the service, so that's an issue. But your scope as an attacker is a little bit limited if they're using a strong password because you're not gonna be able to crack the ticket. Now, that is the interesting thing about these tickets. You can crack them offline. So they're hashed with the password of the account. So if it's a weak password, you can actually crack the ticket and get that user's password. And then of course, you can impersonate them on the domain because you have their credentials at that point. And just like cracking any hash can be done offline, which is pretty nice. So you're able to throw a lot of passwords at them really fast and you don't have to worry about detection or anything like that. So let's just jump into this and uh, demo this here since I have everything set up in the lab. And one thing that I will say is if you are learning this stuff, trying to learn Active Directory and level up as much as possible, it's only going to be a matter of time before you're ready to start applying to those jobs. And before that time even comes, you're definitely going to want to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know absolutely ace it. I have that down for you in the description below, absolutely for free. So check that out. And without further ado, let's get into the demo. All right. So I have here a Kali machine and we'll zoom in here a bit. And obviously this machine here, well, maybe not obviously perhaps, but it is not domain joined or anything like that, but it does, it is on the same network as the Active Directory environment. So I don't have to worry about firewalls or anything like that. If I did, maybe I could do some pivoting in order to run my tools in that environment. But in this case, we're on the same network. We're not domain joined. But 
if we wanted to conduct an as rep roasting attack from this machine, the easiest way, in my opinion, would be to use the Impacket tool suite. All right, so I have here a list of users. And if you're doing this outside of the domain, if you're going to use the Impacket tools, then you're going to need a text file or something like that of all the users that you want to attempt to as rep roast. So basically with this is it's going to go through all of the users on the domain because in this case, I just have the list of the users. If you don't, then maybe you can obtain that through some kind of recon that you do, whether it's uh, poking around on the site. Uh, maybe you even do some OSINT through LinkedIn, scraping stuff off of LinkedIn, uh, finding out what their username structure is. So in this case, you see first initial, last name, one of the common structures, but maybe it's a different structure in your case. However you obtain it, um, we're kind of skipping out on that for now. I'm just going to have the list here. Uh, but yeah, you might need to obtain this in you know through recon. So you're going to use this in the impacket command. And the command that we want to run is impacket get np users and then the domain. So again, you're going to need to know the domain that you're up against. So for me, it's the CyberCorp domain. So we're going to need to add that to our host file first off. So just to show you, I have already added that to my Etsy host file here. This is the IP address of the domain controller. And the domain is CyberCorp, CyberCorp.com. So I put in both of these into my host file in the same line. And with that, it'll be able to resolve this. And this command is very quirky. So there's a few things that you really need to be aware of. I believe this is required here, the slash at the end. We can maybe try without it. But as far as I'm aware, I think you need this. Uh, definitely you need the users file, which is a list of the users. So let's just go ahead and run it like so. And yeah, it's not seeing this as a domain because we don't have the slash. So this is just an example to you guys of like how quirky this command is. So I would definitely recommend to save this to your notes. But yeah, we put this in here. Now it recognizes it as a domain. And as you see, most of these accounts do not have the it's a kind of a double negative here. So it's like, it does not have, don't require pre offset. So basically it requires pre authentication. So you're not able to as rep roast again with as rep roasting, we're looking for all the accounts that do not require pre authentication Then we can easily impersonate them, get a ticket. And we see there is one such account out of this list of a uh, hundred or so that is vulnerable to this. And that is the L Lewis account. So as you see here, we have this hash here. And if we wanted to do a little bit more digging on this, we can look and see which one this is, which kind of hash we're dealing with here. So let's just go ahead and do that. The way I would typically do that is I would look up hashcat example hashes. And I know with the newer version of Hashcat, you can actually have it guess, but I've found that to be a little hit or miss. Sometimes it would guess incorrectly. So I still like to specify which one I'm dealing with here. So it'll be 18 mode 1800, uh, I believe. Yep. KRB five hash Kerberos five, but I don't have that set up. I don't have Hashcat currently set up on my host machine and I don't really like cracking in a VM, especially while I'm recording a video. So I'll skip that, I'll skip out on that for now. But yeah, you could just use, use a tool like Hashcat or maybe John the Ripper in order to try and crack the hash. And doing so would yield the password to the account if it was uh, a weak password. Now, there's other tools we could use, other means we could use as well. And I think definitely if you're going for the OSCP, you're going to want to know how to do this from a domain joined Windows machine because that's usually the context that you're dealing with when it comes to pretty much all the Active Directory based attacks. So that is one thing that I noticed about OS OSCP, right? That's different than if you're doing CTFs on Hack the Box and stuff. A lot of times with those CTFs, you're doing everything from your Kali machine pretty much. But with OSCP and even real world stuff like the actual engagements and things like that, you're going to be working out of a domain joined Windows machine. 
So how do you work off of that? Well, I have the commando VM here, which is a domain joined Windows box. And I've logged into one of the domain users. Now I could do this through the PowerShell prompt um, on the Kali box. You know, say we were able to fish our way in and we had credentials to one of these accounts. I could use that and log on to his system and run the Azure Roast attack from there as well. But just to show you in a Windows machine how we would do use a tool like Rubus or Rubius in order to do this. So we have Rubius here already. And I just went ahead and, and transferred this over. But obviously you take OPSEC and all that into account if you're on a real engagement. There's other ways you could do this as well, uh, especially with a C2 framework. But just to use Rubius just straight from the disk here. So let's just run Rubius as rep roast. And I'll show you what it looks like if I just run it as is. You now you see very quickly it's able to uh, to get the hash, but the annoyance here is there's this indentation that's gonna make it really inconvenient to copy paste because we're gonna get rid of this tab here. So easiest way to deal with that is just to add the no wrap flag. And we can also adjust this to be in hashcat format so we can use it with hashcat and yeah there you go you do those two things here now you see if you notice here before we had before we changed it to the hashcat format it's just slightly different there's a different uh a different hash here uh, it wouldn't work with hashcat so if you want to use it with hashcat you need to specify that flag and now you see we have the dollar sign 23 and we actually have everything Nice and close together, easy to copy. We don't have to deal with those spaces because we used the no wrap flag. And now from here, the process is the exact same. We could use Hashcat to try and crack the hash and obtain the password for this account. And then from there, we have successfully conducted an as rep roast attack to gain that foothold onto the domain. And that will open up a whole slew of opportunities for us. The attack surface now has greatly widened because there's so much that you can do in an Active Directory environment once you get that initial foothold, once you get that initial set of credentials. And we're definitely going to be exploring some more of those attacks and those credential-based attacks. Let me know in particular if there's certain there's a certain Active Directory attack that you want to see demoed in the lab, and I'll do my best to set that up and put that together for you guys. But certainly, I mean, I love making this content and learning this stuff, but certainly I want to make the content that you guys are most eager to see. So let me know what those might be. And you guys are always giving me great suggestions. So I think it'd be really helpful. But if you want to get into some more technical content or even catch up on the series so far, I have those videos on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.